Hey guys, I'm Dave and we're back today with another edition of Space Stock Updates. Uh, we got a lot of news for you today around Rocket Lab, Relativity, ABL, Virgin Orbit and more. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new here, please hit that sub button. Every subscriber really helps. And if you're a returning viewer, every like helps with the algorithm as well. Thank you so much. Now let's dive into Space Stock Updates. First up, we have a Rocket Lab launch success. Rocket Lab successfully launched their 35th Electron mission on March 24th of 2023. This comes just seven days after a successful Electron mission from Launch Complex 2 in Virginia. This mission coming on the other side of the world from their Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. This mission also saw the rocket successfully splash down into the ocean as part of their new recovery efforts where they fish rockets out of the water and then reuse them that way instead of catching them with a helicopter. There was a lot of great information given in the webcast, a lot of details around Neutron as well as Electron and more. So if you did miss it, I would say it's worth checking out the webcast. I'll be sure to link it in the description below. There's also already been several components already reused from recovered electrons that have gone swimming before, and it bodes well for their reusability efforts. Uh, also on Rocket Lab, CFO Adam Spice was recently on a new conference, and uh, I'm going to dive into the entire conference in more detail, but just a couple high-level points. He did say that their Neutron rocket will be launching for about $50 million, which is actually pretty much exactly what I predicted when I was making my own model of, of the financial future of Rocket Lab a few weeks ago, so nice to see that I was right on on that one. They are going to try to be competing directly with Falcon 9, although at a lighter massed orbit. So they do need to come in a bit cheaper than that Falcon 9 launch cost of around $65 million. So if you can fit your payload onto the smaller neutron rocket, definitely $50 million would be the way to go for most customers. Adam believes that this will position Neutron very well for competition with the Falcon 9 and the future launch market. Now on to Relativity, they finally did have a launch of their Terran 1 rocket. This rocket has been on the pad for quite a while now. It's suffered several delays, several countdown aborts, one coming at half a second before liftoff, and then some more weather delays, different issues they've had to work through as they get this rocket ready for its maiden flight. But it finally did lift off, and it had a flawless liftoff, actually. It got through most of the flight, got through max Q, which is the period of maximum dynamic pressure, on the vehicle. There was some concerns around this period because there was a little bit of uh, worry that the 3D printing might make the structure a little less strong. They do have a little uh, wobbles from the 3D printing, but it got through max Q no problem and even went up uh, beyond the atmosphere and did do a successful stage separation, separating that second stage from the first stage rocket. But the problem came when the second stage rocket failed to ignite. It looked like they had a couple tries at it. We saw some red where they're trying to ignite, but we didn't get any thrust from the vehicle. So it did not pick up enough speed to successfully reach orbit. All in all, though, I would say it's a pretty successful first effort from Relativity. You know, they didn't blow up on the pad or go sideways or get 10 feet off the ground or anything like that. They, they surpassed several milestones in their efforts to launch their rocket, and I'm sure they'll take some learnings from this for the future. Now, Relativity is not publicly traded, as I've said before, but I find the company incredibly fascinating. It's kind of like what happens when you get a ton of funding from Silicon Valley, when you put non-traditional rocketry people into the rocketry industry and they try to change things, do things differently. They're doing everything 3D printing, which is a little bit controversial. Again, I do agree 3D printing is very useful for smaller components and engines and things like that. But for the whole body of the rocket, I remain skeptical that that is the best, cheapest, and fastest way to go, but I do wish Relativity the best of luck with their next launch. This 3D printing technology could become useful when you talk about setting up colonies outside of Earth and printing complex components, say on the moon or other locations. So congratulations to Relativity on a relatively successful first launch, and we'll watch the next one when it arrives. 
Continuing on with Relativity, they also recently released some updates to their planned second rocket, the Terran R. This rocket was originally planned to be fully reusable. It's much larger than their Terran 1 rocket, looking at about 20 tons to orbit versus around 1. And uh, the new plans look to be a little bit more conservative, at least for now. The first, the second stage looks to be expendable instead of reusable. And I think this is a pretty good idea. I found that the design for their rocket originally was a little too ambitious they were trying to go for really the holy grail of rocketry before they had ever even launched a single rocket to orbit so i think paring this down at least at first is good to get get it going and then maybe they can iterate on that and bring in a uh, reusable second stage at a later date to achieve that 100 percent reusability that is their goal and then just more on the Virgin Orbit saga. This has been going on for a few weeks now where their funding has been critically low. Uh, we saw the stock crash after they had to furlough most of their employees without pay. It was looking like they were headed to bankruptcy and things were looking pretty dire. But recently things have actually taken a bit of a turn for the better. They are bringing back a very limited team to try and prepare for their next launch. And they are in advanced talks with an investor to raise about $200 million of additional capital that would keep the company afloat at least a while longer. The CEO said that any viable path for our operations will require us to successfully launch. So kind of justifying why they're bringing back some launch staff and saying they really need that launch to be a success in order for the company to be viable in the future. Now, the private investor who is looking to infuse more capital into the company is named Matthew Brown. And as I said, he's looking at a $200 million investment. He's also participated in funding rounds for SpaceX and Astra, so he does like to invest in the space industry. But strangely enough, he's also a bit of a 9-11 conspiracy theorist. He was behind the film called Loose Change. I don't know if you've heard it, but it came out way back uh, a little after 9-11, basically arguing that 9-11 was an inside job. And so a very strange story there. Uh, not too sure how the Department of Defense or Space Force or, you know, just the government in general would feel about giving contracts to a company, you know, owned by this guy very very odd that but anyway the stock did rebound sharply on the news of the funding uh brown would likely take a greater than 50 percent stake in the company because he would get a controlling interest so in one sense he would be getting pennies on the dollar compared to the money previously invested in the company i'm pretty sure richard branson has already invested over a billion dollars and now brown would be coming in with 200 million and getting a controlling stake in the company but beggars can't be true choosers uh if the option is go out of business or take 200 million for a large stake in the company you really have to take that 200 million anything's better than going out of business at this point so we'll see if virgin orbit is able to use that 200 million dollars well enough to reach profitability if the deal goes does go through because it hasn't been finalized as of yet uh, and then just a brief note on Astra. They did announce that their next investor day will be on April 25th. I'll be watching that as well. But something tells me the mood around this investor day will not be as excited and jubilant as previous investor days have been. Astra's situation is looking pretty bleak lately. Maybe not quite as bad as Virgin Orbits has been, but still they are in a rough place as well for a launch company. And then just a note on Redwire Space, they have received a new $5.9 million NASA contract to finish designing a new space manufacturing system. The system will be called Fab Lab. It will be tested on board the International Space Station, allowing crews to make tools and components as needed without bringing them from Earth. Uh, hopefully this technology will be useful for the future where we have potentially a lunar space station, a lunar base, and it's much more feasible to manufacture components you need as you need them out there instead of bringing new equipment all the way from Earth. So I do hope that Fab Lab is a success and I think it's a great idea for future manufacturing in space. Finally, another would-be launcher, this one ABL, which is another private company, received a $60 million contract 
contract to build out its responsive launch operating capacity as a part of the U.S. Space Force and U.S. Air Force Strategic Funding Increase Program. $60 million is an extremely large amount of money for the small company as they try to get ready for their second launch. The first one was a failure and they're really trying to get a foothold into the industry. So very big news for ABL Space. We'll be watching to see if they're able to get that second launch going successfully. Last year, the Space Force awarded similar contracts to Firefly Space at 17.6 million. Earlier this month, the Space Force did grant ABL Space dedicated launch space at Launch Complex 15 in Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Base, so uh, good progress being made by ABL. Uh, that's all the updates I have for you today. I hope you found this information useful as you continue watching the space industry and investing in space stocks. I'll be back next time with more updates, and I'm going to go into greater detail on Adam Spice's recent comments because I think there are some implications there for us Rocket Lab shareholders. Let me know what you think about the latest news. Uh, were you happy with Relativity's launch? Would you consider it a success even though they didn't reach orbit? Or do you consider anything less than orbit a failure? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now. Have a great week.